wrong guys well the time has come to give you my final thoughts on the ducati v4 street fighter s i've done a first ride review of this bike which will pop up the top i'm now returning this to ducati uk now we could get some rain i'm hoping not join me while i tell you everything i've learned and what i think about this incredible machine when i ride back to ducati uk let's go She's ready to rock. So the Ducati V4S is obviously based heavily on the Panigale V4. It is really the same bike without the fairing on. The engine is more or less identical. Tuned slightly differently for a bit more port, bit more pork, a bit more torque, and a bit less power right at the top. So a more torquey motor. They've also given it a smaller front sprocket and they've gone up a tooth at the rear to make the gearing a bit more suitable for the road but it's very and, and and to be perfectly honest you don't think when you get on this bike yeah converted converted sports bike this has got really wide bars a very upright riding position much more upright than i thought it would be much more upright than the super duke for example very very comfortable a really well padded seat it's actually a very similar riding position to the zh2 and this is actually the most comfortable of the new Super Naked, would you believe? The power from the end is incredible. I mean, this on the paper, this bike is 208 horsepower, 100 and I think it's 180 kilos dry. I think it's 199 kilos wet. So it's the most powerful and lightest of the Super Nakeds and it, and it feels like it. The most impressive thing about this bike is just how quickly it covers ground. I think it's, it's, it's just it's a testament to how good the Panigale is. The electronics on this bike are, are, are incredible. It gives so much grip. I think it's got so much mechanical grip and it's got this incredible suite of electronics on the top. I don't know if it's because it's got the clever reverse crank in this, you know, where the, where the actual crank turns, the engine turns in a different direction to what the wheels do, so it counteracts that gyroscopic effect. I don't know if that makes the bike a lot more stable, but it, this thing is just absolutely planted. The front wheel doesn't even come up. You know, it, it, it is seriously planted. And if you're looking for something just to cover ground at an incredible pace it is just so easy to ride so easy to ride fast that is the thing with it it's devastatingly quick i was a bit worried that this engine wouldn't be talky enough you know it's all at the top there wasn't enough grunt that's nonsense there is a load of grunt from this v4 and blipper is also very very good sounds so sporty and the noise of this thing i've got my external recorder on so you can sort of sample a bit of how this sounds for me as a rider but listen to this it is so noisy for standard bike i don't know how they've got it through noise for through, you know your emission noise regulations is incredibly loud. Flipper. Flipper's really good. Quick shifter. Again, really good. You just want to work that box up and down. It sounds so good on the quick shifter flipper. When you first twist the throttle, it's a little bit initially flat. They've done something with the mapping to soften it initially, and I'm, I'm not sure I'm a massive fan of that. It sort of softened, and then it kicks. Incredible amount of kick, and the wheel just stays on the ground. It's, 
it doesn't, you know, it really is so stable, so planted. The brakes are Brembo Stylemas, you know, the braking is very good. The initial lever movement, it's not too sharp. You do have to pull it a little bit, the front brakes on this. They're not massively, massively sharp initially. But it's, you know, that's just a case of getting, getting used to things. Beautiful TFT, but it's lacking, for me, some real essentials. There is no fuel gauge on this bike. No fuel gauge. There's just a fuel line. And the tank only holds 16 litres. And this bike's pretty thirsty. I have seen 90 miles in range until the light comes on. 90 miles. That's when ridden, you know, spiritedly, let's say, but 90 miles. Really? I don't know why the tank is only 16 litres. It, it's not enough. But the amount the bike drinks, it is quite simply not enough. The electronics are fantastic, but it's a couple of things I think it's missing. It's missing the ability, or I can't seem to find it anyway, missing the ability to turn off the anti-wheelie and leave the traction control on. You can do that on the Super Duke. And you know, a naked like this, you, you want to have a few wheelies. And this just, this is one of my, I'll stay there. This is one of my complaints with this, is it is almost, too good it, it does the wheel doesn't come up but you know it's almost too easy that it takes some of the, the thrill and the excitement away from riding this sort of massive naked bike you need to be able to at least turn off the wheelie control and leave that incredible traction control on but there's no option there's a couple of different levels of wheelie control and i've actually got this in the lowest level this is wheelie level one and even in that mode it barely comes off the ground barely you have to wait for a rise in the road and give it a handful again i don't know if it's that the counter rotating crank which is keeping the wheel down you know mechanically mechanically there's an incredible amount of grip and the bike is incredibly stable add on top of that this amazing electronic suite it, it just keeps the bike in check it's so easy to ride fast that it is really almost cheating. <laughs> it really is that easy. It is an incredible piece of engineering, this bike. It really is. Brakes, brakes, brakes. Lovely. Lay it in. <laughs> Power it out. Getting on the power. On track, it would be amazing. Oh, I think it would be good on track. You could just get on the power so early out of the bends. That traction control is so good at just keeping things in check. Oh, it'd be amazing on track. I'd love to do a track day on it. It's an incredible bike. It's an incredible, incredible bike. It makes me wonder just how good must the new Panigale V4 be, which this bike is obviously heaven. It is a Panigale V4 without the fairing on, really. You know that that as a sports bike, that must be a, that must be an absolute weapon on track because this is so easy. You know, you, you can sort of forget about riding it almost and just concentrate on where you're going and your lines. The actual bike sort of just sorts everything else out. For a sports bike on track, that's an amazing feat. But I think just. On the, on, the, on the super naked, you want a little bit more rider involvement. There she is, outside the fire station. <laughs> red on red. The bike does just look incredible. I mean, when I first saw it, when well, I've seen it at the shows and stuff, I've been like, yeah, it looks all right, it looks nice, looks nice. But when you see it up close, out in the wild, it just does look amazing. I mean, that, that red paint with the gold of the Olins, just, just beautiful. It's the little details like this, this mesh on the, on the tank cover at the front here. These little vents on the main headlight cow, you know, the, with the LED cooling fins underneath. And like this, this arrangement here with the, the styling of it is it, beautiful. I do like that waspy, waspy headlight with the little, you know, the daylight running. When people see you coming down the road, they look, 
because it just looks really unusual coming down the road and yeah I, 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 do, <laughs> I do love the look of this thing look at these sort of bolt finishes little details Marchesini wheels which are just beautiful the Diablo Rosso Corsa 2s so it's not got the Super Corsas this has got the Diablo Corsas because these are the three compound tyres so you've got a hard bit in the middle medium and then really sticky on the outside because you know this bike does eat tyres so you need a bit of hard compound in the middle I think a set of Super Corsas would last you a thousand miles on one of these the big talking point is the wings. They are a little bit plasticky. For the S model, I'd love to see those really in carbon fibre. They look a little bit plasticky and I don't like the texture of them. They're like quite textured and it makes them quite hard to, to clean as well. But uh, they give apparently, I think it's 30 kilos of downforce at like 120 miles an hour or something. So they do do something. The bike is incredibly stable. So perhaps those wings Oh, you can actually notice perhaps that's why you've got that stability with this bike it's a combination of that counter rotating crank and these bloody wings that's why you can't get the wheel off the ground look at the side stand on this it's like a, a piece of jewelry look at the quality of it and, that, and that's one way I like to sort of look at look at the side stand of the bike something which a lot of manufacturers don't really pay much attention to and that and that gives you a bit of an idea of the thought and the design which has gone into the bike by looking at something as simple as a side stand and that is I think the best side stand I've ever seen <laughs> put it on my mantelpiece there's your electronic Olin's unit Suspension is amazing. That that new electronic owning suspension is incredible. The seat is like an Alcatara material. I don't know if it actually is, but it feels like it. And it is so padding. It's like a proper gel seat. Rear of the bike, you've got like the DRL rear tail lights. Very nice. It would look beautiful with a full rear cowl. It's just got a obviously a passenger seat. Let's see if we've got any storage under here. Well, the only thing you can keep in the back is the actual strap. For your pillion to hold on to there's not a great deal of storage in there you're not going to fit your big mac in there i may get my hash brown in there that's about it electronic steering damper that's the the wiring for the owner suspension we've got them I and just like the little quality of like this ring around the, the headstock ring it is uh it is beautiful this bike says it's got heated grips it's lying they're not fitted it's just got the button to remind you what you could have had if you'd spent a little bit more money. Switch gear is nice, but as I mentioned, I find it hard to push in here. And it, with my big sausage fingers, I find it a little bit hard to operate. There's also no cruise control on this, no cruise control. The dash is uh, it's very nice. These Ducati dashes are lovely. I really like that rev layout. I'm not a big fan of normal you know, rev counters on a TFT. So if they've done it like that, so it looks like an analog gauge, I've got a lot of time for that. Very nice. But there she is. Let's jump back on. I've had a couple of insurance quotes for Nigel at BE Moto. Now Nigel is my fake person I, I get quotes for, just so you compare insurance between different models. Now Nigel is 38, I think. I'll flash it on the screen as detail. 38, a teacher from Norwich, keeps the bike in a locked garage. Now, with these expensive Super Nakeds, there's all these quotes of if he had the bike track fitted. But I didn't think these prices were too bad. This, this bike, the Street Fighter for Nigel, would cost him £239 a year with titanium cover. The Super Duke would cost 252 So this is actually slightly cheaper than the Super Duke to insure. And the ZH2 will set you back 200 and, or not, 271 pounds per year. So the Super Duke, sorry, the ZH2 is the most expensive. Is that around about? No, go around that. The ZH2 is the most expensive to insure because of that supercharger, followed by the Super Duke, and then this being the cheapest. And this is the most expensive bike, so I, <laughs> that is some real good news for the Street Fighter. If you do get a quote from BMoto, make sure you mention me and you'll get a little bit of money. Wait, they'll sort you out, I've been told. They'll sort you out. <laughs>
Well, if that's a good or a bad thing, I don't know exactly what's sorting out there, do they? May put 50 quid on your on your uh, on your policy for I know, <laughs> but I've been told they'll sort you out. Give them a try. I'm really in two minds with this bike. I absolutely love it because it's so far so capable. But then again, I think I'm not sure because it's just too easy to ride and. You know, it's, it, it keeps everything in check too much. Compared to the Super Dew, it, it is faster. I think it's faster across country, but the, the Super Duke is, feels more of an analog bike, even though it has got all of the electronics, you know, everything, it, is, it just feels more analog. This is, this, this is a, a demonstration of what technology can do. That's how they differ. The, the, the Super Duke feels like just a, a very well set up analog bike, you know, incredible throttle response. I think the throttle response, because they've got that softening effect they've done, you don't feel like it's quite as direct as what the Super Duke is. And I, I don't like that. I'm not too keen on the throttle response on this bike. You just feel that it's, doing a lot for you and it takes a little bit away from the rider involvement that and that is really my main criticism of this bike it seems you know is it just too good has all of that technology has all you know has it just taken something away from the rider has it has it gone too far and taken too much away from the rider experience if you're an average rider this bike will flatter you absolutely flatter you and, and you know i know they sort of band about with the with the with the new planicale on track you know it'll make you a second quicker per lap it's it's like this you know it, it's that good it, it will make you faster and if you know it will, it will complement your riding and you know it will really take you a step above but it does take a little bit away from the from the from the experience by doing that does that make any sense it's too good does that make any sense i'm not sure am i talking nonsense quite possibly oh you little street fighter you you're so good you're too good well there we go guys, thanks so much for watching, massive thanks to Ducati UK for lending me the Street Fighter, it's amazing, it is a true marvel of modern engineering this bike, an absolute marvel, cutting edge, I don't think there's any other bike which is as cutting edge in technology as this, it is an incredible thing, yes it's expensive, but you're buying something so premium that you know that that quality shows through in every respect with this it's an amazing thing but thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video take care this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. Whoa! I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Whoa! <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind, get me it up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh.